back. Uh, today I am going to be showing you guys the process of this watercolor piece that I did a couple weeks ago uh, that you guys seem to love so much. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to all of your amazing feedback on this piece. It was really really amazing to, to see. Thank you very much. So yeah thankfully I filmed it for you guys <laughs> a little bit and I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of what I did and while I did that I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about experimenting because this piece was a bit experimental for me um, and I'll show you guys in a bit why but I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about that because some of you uh, actually no a lot of you ask me questions about like how how to go around experimenting with different materials and how to experiment with different you know work processes and stuff like that and how I do it so uh, I decided to have a little chat with you guys about it I don't have any notes or anything I'm just sitting down and having like a free talk uh, with you guys so yeah so first a little bit about the piece I saw this uh, really cute picture on Pinterest of a girl lying on a field of daisies and I've been staring at it for like a couple weeks now like wanting to draw it so I decided I would uh, try to draw it in like a, a more of a magical kind of uh, environment so she's got like a, a, a moon on her head she's like Ella obviously and she's like you know staring off into the void anyway <laughs> so basically for this piece I wanted to try something new and different and I wanted to kind of challenge myself uh, mainly because I was procrastinating doing actual uh, work for uni but we, we don't really have to talk about that I <laughs> I was uh, wanting to do something really detailed and something that would take me quite a while again because I was procrastinating because <laughs> I, I realized that I tend to when when I have uh, a piece that I'm doing that has a lot of detail in it I tend to just kind of scribble all the details and I just try and rush it and for this one I wanted to take my time and actually add all the details individually so I decided to try and ink this piece with uh, like a nib pen and some ink do for future reference check if your ink is water resistant because I didn't and uh, apparently the ones are Newton inks are not so you'll see later why this is a problem because I used watercolors for this piece which was um yeah, it was a little bit of a uh, failed experiment, I guess, uh, but I, I worked around it and I managed to kind of turn it into uh, an advantage, I guess, I try to make it work my way. So as you see, I was using this really cute carmine pink magenta-ish ink from Windsor & Newton, and I was using a little nib pen with, a, I think it was a felt, a felt tip uh nib or something it was something like that i don't know i borrowed it from my housemate anyway <laughs> yeah this this uh this piece actually really inspired me to go out and buy some actual water resistant inks and the next day i did <laughs> and i bought like three different colors and a new set of uh inking nibs and stuff like that so yeah i really loved the actual inking process it was really therapeutic and i enjoyed it very much and of course i should have again checked if the ink I was using was accurate for the medium I was about to use on top of it but it's fine so that's just a piece of advice if you're ever trying to experiment do make sure it's not um, stupid <laughs> do make sure you know what you're experimenting with and try and have and test things out which was again another thing I did that was really stupid I tested this out only after I inked it I would just I had like someone explain this to me how did how, why did I do this so I tested out the ink um, you know and how it worked with water and other soluble stuff on a, another piece of paper but it was after I inked this piece so done uh, so I, when I was inking it I kind of had this oh shit moment <laughs> where I was like I what am I gonna do and I decided to go ahead with it and try and work with it to the best of my uh, abilities and again keep challenging myself even, and like accepting my mistake and trying to work with it because I feel like again I do this a lot when, when something goes wrong I try to scrap the whole thing and start over instead of dealing with my mistakes and like trying to work with them and work through them so this is again something that I'm trying to work on this year 
So after I inked this whole thing, I let it dry for a couple hours, again trying to avoid as much bleeding as possible, which didn't really work. Because as you can see, when I applied the first wash of colors, you can see that a lot of the pink started bleeding. See, the the there was, this wasn't a huge problem uh, anywhere else except for the face, because it, sort of in the end, after adding a lot of layers, it was it was okay. Like it, it just kind of looks like she goes, he has a she has a bit of pink eye, or she looks a bit high. But like besides that, it's fine. So I then added uh, a bunch of masking fluid to all the daisies and everything, which again. A problem because it bled all the pink ink under the masking fluid and it didn't react very well with the masking fluid should have tr should have experimented with that but it's fine we went with it so yeah experimentation as i said before do make sure you um experiment on like a little piece of paper and just do some swatches try it out i should probably uh learn to do that and just just think about what I'm gonna do before I dive into something, which is sort of what I'm trying to do this year, is to kind of plan out things a lot more, rather than just jumping into a piece head on without any planning, because I, apparently I tend to do that a lot, not only in my art, but also in my life. So <laughs> yeah, I've been thumbnailing a lot. I actually thumbnailed a lot of stuff for this uh, piece before I did it, which was, it's something that I'm getting used to now, thumbnailing, it's, it's very, really, really helpful. So I definitely, um, recommend thumbnailing stuff. It's uh, again something I experimented with a little bit at the beginning of this year, but I really enjoyed it. So after I added um, the most, you know, the the first washes, I guess the base of the watercolors, I kind of stuck down my piece to my table so it didn't move, and I started uh, working on it. And I sped up this part a little bit because it's a bit slow. It's watercolors, so it'll be fine if I speed it up. As you can see. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. It's just that everything has this pinkish hue, sort of, and all of the freckles kind of bled in a little bit, but um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And actually, uh, a really cool thing is that when I worked in on the jumper, I was only using this like minty green aqua color, but the bleeding from the pink ink made it look like this tie-dye, like galaxy sort of jumper. And I think it looked so cool. So I decided to work with that and kind of like try and bleed it as much as possible. And see, this is kind of what I was talking about in terms of experimentation and how um, you should experiment because then you find these things out uh, that you really didn't expect or could never even have imagined was going to happen. So it was a really interesting thing to see, like how the mint watercolor was working with the the pink to then make this really nice purple bleed and it looks like a tie-dye sweater. This is why I'm trying to like branch out a little bit this year and try different things. And yeah, some of them are gonna be a bit of a fail. Like I, I, I immediately thought, oh god, why am I filming this? This is gonna be a failure, a mess. Why am I filming it? But I kept going with it again. So I do really encourage you that if something is going wrong, just keep, like, persevere and go through with it until the end, and then make your your decision. Because I feel like if I gave up on this one uh, early on, as I would have like in the past, I wouldn't have come out with probably one of my favorite watercolor pieces that I've done in a long, long time. Um, and the the difference is that I persevered with it and I kept working on it and I kept trying to work with it until I had something that I was happy with. And um, I'm really happy and proud of myself because me from a couple weeks ago wouldn't have done that. <laughs> and now it's probably one of my favorite pieces that I've done in a long, long time, and it's up on my wall. So <laughs> yeah, I, I kept working with it. Oh, I should mention, I'm using my Arteza 12 pan watercolor set to do this piece. I love these watercolors so much. They're so bright and beautiful. I'm using uh, also the, the masking fluid that I used was the Frisk Artists masking fluid. Yeah, I'll link everything down there as per usual, guys. Yeah, I don't think I've got that much more to t talk to you guys about experimenting. Um, just definitely uh, do your research before you do something because things go wrong, obviously, when you're trying new things out. And I seem to forget that that's a, pr a part of the process. 
it's kind of like me just trying to to tell myself that I should immediately know how to do everything and I I don't so <laughs> I need to stop being so hard on myself and of course now we get to the sexy peel porn of the masking fluid oh yeah oh yeah this is probably my favorite part of just everything and I think many if not all of you will agree <laughs> So as you can see, when I was peeling off the masking fluid, um, some of the pink ink like bled in with each other a little bit, and uh, obviously that was because of the it having such a liquid consistency on top of it. It obviously bled a little bit. So that was another thing that I learned about the masking fluid is to test it out on top of things and see how it the cons its weird, strange consistency uh, reacts to other materials. Because that's something I always forget as well, is that, you know, different materials react differently with each other. And uh, as we all can learn from my mistakes in this piece, is that we need to test things out. <laughs> uh, in the end, most of the daisies came out pretty white, more whiter than I was expecting. Again, very, very pink, and because they bled, they didn't look like daisies anymore, so then I was trying to figure out how I was gonna add like all these yellow tones to it without making it just red or orange and stuff like that. That was another struggle for me after after the fact. <laughs> but I think in the end, it kind of ended up looking okay. They don't exactly look like daisies per se in the end, but they do look like a adjacent of. I did go in with my Signo Univol white gel pen to kind of just accentuate the, the whiteness of the, the petals, just trying to clean up some of the, 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 the petals that bled the most, if that makes any sense, and just kind of try and clean it up. Again, I was trying to uh, do this thing where I push through and do all the details to the best of my abilities and not like rush through things which is what I normally do so obviously this I got bored of it really easily but I got through it and I did it and then I got to my favorite part which is adding all the highlights <laughs> so that was fun So I added all these cute little highlights to her hair and to the grass and everything and it started looking really finished and I was starting to really fall in love with this piece and I was like, okay, okay, persevering was a good decision. I'm really, really loving this now. And uh, so this is when I started adding all of these like final details that I thought would really make it look finished and like everything was intentional. That's another thing about mistakes and when you're experimenting with stuff, try and like work through it and make it intentional because yeah, you should accept your mistakes and everything, but try and work with them in a way that you can pass them off as intentional. And yeah, I think that's the best advice that I can give you. As you can see, I went in with the yellow, like a really bright yellow to try and contrast the pink a little bit. And I went in with a couple of layers of this just to really make it pop, I guess, <laughs> against all the other colors and the really intense pink hue everywhere. And I think I ended up looking like daisies a little bit. So I'm not mad, I'm not mad. And now that I've actually got the correct uh, inks for this sort of medium style, um, I've actually been practicing a lot with those and doing actual uh, watercolor pieces where I can ink it with different colors because that's something I'm really interested in right now is inking stuff with um, a cool color and then uh, painting on top of it. I think it adds this really nice like layer of, I don't know, fresh, new, I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but I just think it looks really different and original and um, it has this extra sort of magical uh, vibe to it. I don't really know how to explain it, but I just like seeing things inked with um, bright colors and then painted on top. And it also helps with, you know, adding the general vibe of a piece and a hue. Obviously, as you can see, <laughs> things still looking quite pink, which is great because I love pink and I love stuff with like a bluish pinkish uh, hue. So this wasn't, I wasn't exactly mad at it. It was just that I was trying to see how much I could pass it off <laughs> as intentional. So now I was, uh, it was time to just peel off the uh, tape around, around my piece. I get a lot of questions about which tape this is. It's just a random piece of washi tape that I found around in my room. It's not important. As long as you obviously 
dab it off somewhere before you place it on the paper. Any, any should do, uh, just to take off a bit of the glue. It should be fine. So then I went in with my black polychromo pencil from Faber Castell. I always like going in with this pencil at the end of my watercolor pieces just to add the harsh con contrasts of just the darkest spots and it really adds this level of finished to every piece that I do. I just really love this step because it really finishes everything off really nicely and it adds this bit of contrast, I guess. I then hated how my signature looked over there in the top corner because um, I had a bunch of problems with the ink bleeding, obviously, and then uh, when I went in with a white gel pen, it just looked messy. So I decided to actually uh, go in and r remove the signature from the top there and then add it somewhere else, uh, but you'll see that later. I think I, I, I really managed to persevere with this piece and it really paid off. It just goes to show that don't, you know, give up on something, even though it's going quite terribly, because even if you hate it in the end, you will have learned a lot of a lot of lessons from your mistakes, because I sure as hell did. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hope I touched on everything that I wanted to say about experimenting with new mediums and processes. If not, I'm so sorry. I didn't really have a plan for this. I just want to have a chat with you guys. But yeah, this is the final piece. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm really happy that I persevered. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching and listening to me rant and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.